Hi, welcome to the Security Buzz Season 3. This event features exclusive discussions with industry leaders on one-on-one -on -one basis. Myself, Tanushka from Critical, a firm dedicated to providing cyber security services across various industries. Today, we are pleased to introduce our guest, Mr. Nitish Kumar Chaube, who currently serves as the DevOps lead at GoQuick Solutions Private Limited with an impressive career of approximately nine years. Mr. Nitish has consistently showcased his experience in this field across various sectors, making him a valuable asset to our ongoing discussions in the ever-evolving cybersecurity landscape. So we welcome you, Nitish. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you, Tanushka. So it's my privilege to be here and uh, thank you for giving us this platform to speak about the cybersecurity and standard practices that is going to be there in the market. Yeah, we welcome you to the Critical team. So let's start with the first question of Season 3, Episode 1. So Nitish, my first question for you would be, how does the fintech industry address the growing concerns of cybersecurity threats and data breaches? In the fast paced world of fintech, cybersecurity is a top priority where they are tackling threats heads on. Plus, the organization have experts from the day one on board that they are strictly making the every functions follow the strict rules that is designed for the fintech domains. Plus, making sure your money stays safe while you are banking online or offline. Well said, Nitish. Uh, so, my next question for you would be. Like in what ways does the compliance contribute to building trust and credibility in the fintech sector, especially when handling sensitive financial transactions? Okay. So, uh, whenever you are using any uh, any of your trans your card for the transactions, right? You get a SMS. True. So you you see that you see that either you are getting uh, a message with your la your first six digit or the last four digit alone. So this is how the PCI DSS or any of the certification gives you the authority that you are using a right platform for your transactions. So my next question would be, could you share some information about your company? Also, we would appreciate a summary of your services and the specific areas in which your company specializes. GoQuick is an e-commerce solution provider focused on improving conversion rates and reducing RTO rates for e-commerce businesses. We also offer a comprehensive suite of services including one-click checkout solutions to enhance the customer experience and drive growth in the e-commerce ecosystem. Very impressive Nitish and I'm pretty sure that Google will cover all the aspects of the e-commerce down the line. So Nitish, next question would be, in light of regulatory changes, how are you adapting your fintech and e-commerce strategies to ensure compliance and maintaining a competitive edge in the market? Okay. So uh, basically, these kind of regulatory changes happen on two levels: either company-wise, how the company is going to function, either the government uh, regulations based, right? So, in recently, we have seen like uh, how the companies is getting functions. So mostly, we move to the work from home, right? True. Setups. And in that scenario, we try to solve this by using the technology like implementing the ZTNA. Correct. ZTNA solutions where uh, if, the, if your employees are sitting into the remote locations, we are still able to figure it out that what actually the traffic is flowing through them, how they are connecting to your servers, hmm. if the auditing logs are going, uh, getting secured on your particular server or not, right? So these kind of things mostly getting solved via the technologies, but it is not uh, it is not we cannot say that it is completely getting solved you have to implement some process in place for the if, if, if there is some uh, if there is some changes into the compliance regulatories or whatever it is very true very true Nitish so Kotak Mahindra Bank's recent incident highlights cyber security concerns in fintech what are your thoughts on how fintech companies can prevent similar issues so I recently read this article and critical blog post right, where I have seen that they have focused on how the cyber how cyber cyber attacks can be prevented on the companies whether it is fintech uh, uh, purely a fintech high level domain or it is a either a company who is just fetching some data for the calculations right. 
so in, in in those articles i have read there are some standards that should be implemented that is basic regulation should be implemented within yeah. all those forms irrespective of whatever the business they are into plus you should be also updating your uh, technology in terms of uh, in terms of the attacks that we are getting so every day attacks is getting mature so we should be also maturing our technology within a stack also very well said so uh, my next question is what's one piece of cyber security advice you would give to a fintech startup to build a strong foundation from day one okay so my strong suggestion would be hire a good engineer good cyber security engineer and a team from day one or making sure your business is going to thrive well with the updated technology of security and compliance so definitely that government bodies used to mandate uh mandate this compliance thing right after some uh, after some uh, revenue or whatever uh, after some time right whenever you going into deeply into the using deeply your fintech data but uh it, it is not that time actually when you start focusing on security and compliance you should be focusing on security and compliance from day one you should have a better engineers who can implement the better process and the better technology within your tech stack from day one where your data is secure and getting monitored and your business should be growing along with them okay so in this uh, conclusion we can say that cyber security posture should be strong okay let's start with the rapid fire round of this episode in your opinion what is the misconception about cyber security in fintech so in cyber security is not only about tools that buying True. a tools and uh, uh, getting a getting a high tech within your companies that you have implemented this you have implemented that but mostly the company where they are lacking is the process the hardened process that should be followed by each of the employee hmm. and each of the business sectors hmm. each of the business uh, in their business uh, strategically into their field okay so i would say that uh, this should be fo- uh, th- they should be more focusing on the process technology is a one part but the higher part is the process that is getting missed in most of the companies uh the next question is what does ddos stand for it's a distributed denial of services where uh, attacker used to uh, overwhelm your apis overwhelm your traffic or a port by malfunctioning your uh, request right so that you would not be able to your service would not able to uh, uh, accommodate accommodate the genuine uh, a, a genuine request but they are getting blocked because uh, already some apis are Uh, choking your servers and all and what is the main risk of using public wifi the loss of data your whatever you are connecting if you are connected to a cafe network right you are and when you are using a company network right so your data is actually not flowing through your laptop only but it is going to flow through the their router hmm. so router will have the logs so they can get what the password you have entered what kind of access you are what a kind of url you are getting So they will have that. So definitely, the loss of data will be there. Okay. Uh, what safeguards against data loss? Uh, data loss. So, in my knowledge, like uh, there are there are two sectors where you can actually uh, you can focus on to prevent this kind of data loss. First one is should be internal threat and external threat. When you are going to cover these two sectors, your data loss is not going to happen. So, external threat means. if someone from outside is trying to penetrate your network and internal threat is where some of your employees is trying to steal your data or trying to expose your data to the whether unknowingly or, un- or, or uh, unknowingly they are trying to, they are sending the data to the outer network so if you are going to solve this thing you are definitely going to not having this data loss uh, my next question is what's the primary function of a firewall in network security So firewall is basically uh you can call it as a security guy who is sitting with in front of your gate who is just allowing who is authorized hmm. so it is kind of in terms of technology you, you will say that you are basically opening a door for your web your service so that particular traffic can come in on a particular port and my last question for this episode would be What does PCI DSS stand for in the context of cybersecurity and compliance? 
So PCI DSS is definitely a compliance, but it is more like a standard practice gone by the government bodies that they have made some regulatory uh, 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 strategy to how the business, how the fintech business can function within the India and uh, how they can use or save or utilize the fintech data to promote their business needs. Okay, so uh, PCI DSS is not only the uh, not only the term. I can say it is more like a regulatory functionality which your company can use to function their business in a, in a, in a, in a secure and a better manner. Thanks, Nitish, for joining with us today and uh, sharing such a insightful information with us. And we are grateful that we are working with GoQuick, and it was a pleasure speaking with you.